Hi, I'm Kevin Klein. Let's talk Winnipeg about the Our Winnipeg plan and the complete community strategy. Those are two very big documents that will determine how development is done in the city for the next 25 years. And they're being pushed through right now by the mayor and many of his uh, executive policy committee councillors. I spoke to my EPC colleagues and I sent them four motions. The four motions are available on my website and I invite, invite you to take a look at them. They're at uh, kevinkline.ca. But I want to talk about the one main motion which was calling for a cost-benefit analysis to be done by an independent party. And the reason for that is because they haven't included that in the Our Winnipeg plan at all. It doesn't talk about does development pay for development? Because this opens the door for this mayor and those members to bring back an impact fee. Now take a look at what I said and then I'm going to tell you what some of my colleagues said about taxing you more. We have Councillor Kevin Klein who's registered in opposition to both our Winnipeg and Complete Communities. Uh, Councillor Klein, if you want to start your video and you'll have 10 minutes to make your presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that, and uh, good afternoon, colleagues. You've certainly had a long and, and interesting day with a, a little more time to go. Uh, a large number of delegates with uh, a few in support and, uh, and many opposed. And I guess uh, that's telling us something. Uh, I think we're at a point now where people are clearly telling us they, they are not satisfied with the plans as presented today. Uh, they feel the, their quality of life is, is in jeopardy. And they are concerned. And in fact, I'm sure you noticed, as I did, the uh, PowerPoint presented by the Public Service uh, didn't say it, uh, but uh, it stated, sorry, it did state that people submitting feedback, residents, I would assume, said they were skeptical about the use of feedback and the city's intent to use any feedback. I guess that confirms the residents' trust in City Hall may be eroding. Uh, Complete Communities is based on their words, the public service's best information across the department and was further supported by engineering subconsultants AECOM. Um, now, this to me is, seems like a bit of a conflict given the city has uh, delegated its planning capabilities to an external firm, uh, which the city has had issues with in the past and who continues to be awarded some of the largest contracts for work in the city of Winnipeg. A fact, AECOM is an American multinational engineering uh, firm based in Los Angeles with reported revenues in 2018 of $20 billion, and that's $1 billion less than McDonald's. The city plan is meant for the people of the city and should be developed 100% by the people of the city, not uh, with the input of a foreign multinational company. They, uh, they are typically the type of firm you would hire to build a new airport from the start to gold mine or to coordinate Olympics. Um, that is typically where such foreign expertise is of use. A city isn't just housing to live and businesses to work. It's also places to enjoy leisure time, socialize and recreate. Just like City Hall is not just a tax collector, it's a service provider. And seeing so many people and listening to all the presentations today and considering the statements of the, in the public services own presentation, I believe people want to see more clarity and more facts. That's why I am asking for a cost benefit analysis to be done. Development should be revenue positive to the city and its residents with development ultimately resulting in positive growth and improved services. And I think that's something we can all agree on. A thorough cost-benefit analysis is critical in all projects to provide clear quantitative data which will you know, be necessary when council decides on questions such as does development pay for development and what is the cost-benefit of infill versus urban sprawl? Not opinions. Everyone has an opinion and thought, but the facts. Let's look at the facts. We know that not applying a thorough cost-benefit analysis to all development projects results in cost overruns to the city, which pushes the city to engage in alternate taxation methods, such as impact fees, which are strongly opposed and often poorly implemented, resulting in legal proceedings and large costs to the city. 
In fact, all city projects, policy, and development action requires a thorough cost-benefit analysis, including assigning a dollar value to the environment, green space, parkland. Not conducting such a cost-benefit analysis is against best financial management practices. You each have a copy of my motion that is calling on the public service to acquire a thorough independent cost-benefit analysis. I've also provided you with three other motions, and I'm hoping that one of you will move them on my behalf when the time comes next week, because as you know, we are not permitted to move motions at APC ourselves, and we're limited to only two at council, and we don't always have the opportunity to get them in quicker than others might, so it becomes a, a bit of a, a challenge. One of my motions addresses the development in current parkland, big and small. We need, to we need to be clear on that. We need to be concise on that so we eliminate the fear and protect our green space and understand the true value of that green space. I have a motion to eliminate development on full golf courses and one that is asking for a policy to protect our riverbanks. Now first, I'm sure everyone noticed that uh, in the public service presentation earlier, it didn't state that all land would be developed within the perimeter. However, if you take a good look at the maps provided, it somewhat indicates that all land within the perimeter will be developed. I don't know how that's gonna become 50-50. And when I think about our rivers, I, I want you to think about Ottawa. I'm sure most of you have been to our nation's capital and you know Ottawa's riverbank system. You know, there's the Ottawa River, the Radu River uh, Bank, and the Radu Canal. Three separate waterways that are all fully protected, which would explain why Ottawa is considered Canada's most beautiful city. And if you just take time to research the value of waterfront property, you would see why I believe that we need to consider the cost-benefit analysis and understand that green is the new gold. Green space helps reduce the island heat effect, reducing electricity costs to building owners throughout the city and freeing up electrical infrastructure, a savings. Green space vegetation absorbs water at significant rates, reducing flooding issues and flooding costs to the city and residents, as well as reducing the costs associated with drainage and sewer infrastructure, a savings. Green space acts as a home to wildlife, which allows for more natural ecosystems to remain in balance without a balanced ecosystem, we have the potential for invasions of one species. That's occurred in the city on many uh, different areas or in many different areas, excuse me. And it comes at a large cost to the city. That would be a savings. Green space fosters a strong bird population which helps control mosquitoes, the tree canopy of the damaging canker worms and disease carrying ash borer beetles, all at a zero cost to the city, a savings. Green space within proximity to residential areas reduce the city's uh, vehicular traffic, significantly reducing the cost to, city, to the city to maintain and expand roadways, a savings. Cities with large areas of green space, and I'm specifically thinking about New York and uh, Vancouver, Central Park, Stanley Park, can attract significant tourism and new residents and with the associated benefit of increasing revenues to local businesses, city services, and of course the overall economy, not only as savings, but earnings. A variety of green spaces will allow for excellent film sets that the, uh, will be utilized by Manitoba Film Industry, which has a significant spin-off of benefits to the local economy and thus the city tax base. Money in our pocket and we don't have to do anything. Large amounts of green space keep residents living within the city and contributing to the tax base uh, instead of relocating to the rural areas and other towns and then commuting to Winnipeg with no contribution to the tax base yet still utilizing city services, a financial loss. We can promote whatever we like, but it will be driven by the market. People will buy where they want to buy and they'll buy how they want to buy. We cannot force that. And what about the elephant in the room? Everyone seems to be ignoring it. The province will soon introduce its own legislation that will more than likely overrule each of these plans. So I'm wondering if this was the best time and use of resources 
as well as money. I wonder if it wouldn't have been wiser to invest time in rebuilding our relationship with the province and working together, as I know we are in some cases, on the municipal plan together, on the capital region plan more openly and collaboratively, as opposed to putting out two plans that we can tell has created fear with some residents, concern, and quite possibly the thought of moving outside the perimeter so that they can have a different quality of life. I know you have a busy day. I know you have a few more to, uh, representations to be heard tonight, so I'll leave it at that, and thank you for your time. Okay, thanks. Have a great evening. No questions. Thank you. To have dead silence after I talk to uh, the Executive Policy Committee Council members is normal now. Uh, they don't ask questions. They don't even want to acknowledge that I'm there. Most of them are more than likely typing on their computers, and uh, maybe you can see that in the footage. But let's talk about the impact fee. Because in the media, the mayor was asked the question because I did bring it out. This is an opening, this is an open doorway to new fees for housing. Now, how can you say that you want to have affordable housing in Winnipeg so that we can attract people to our city so it will grow properly and we can bring a diverse uh, community here and we can bring new businesses here when you're going to artificially increase the price of housing? Because that's what Mayor Bowman wants to do and it sounds like that's what Councillor Mays wants to do by putting in a development fee. Different name than an impact fee. But how can either one of them justify doing that when they don't have the evidence? Both of them are lawyers. Evidence is very important in the legal world, isn't it? Or is it? Maybe if you don't have the evidence, that allows you to argue your case stronger. Certainly does appear what's happening here. Because without an independent cost-benefit analysis, we won't know the truth about whether development pays for development. And Mayor Bowman said the cost of growth are not paying for themselves. That's what he said in this quote from the Winnipeg Sun. The costs of growth are not paying for themselves. I want you to think about that for a second. And when asked and pushed whether or not he wants to bring in another impact fee, Bowman said, my position is clear on that. I think it's in the best interest of existing homeowners. So if you're a young person between the age of 20 and 25 and you're looking to buy a new home, you're going to have to pay more artificially because the city of Winnipeg wants to take more money from others. Put in another tax or we'll call it a fee. You are not allowed to do that until you clean up your own house. We do not acknowledge the spending problems we have at the city of Winnipeg. We don't have a revenue problem. We have a spending problem. This council, Councillor Mays and others, all voted no to doing a zero-based budget review. Why? Because that would indicate our spending problem. Why are they now saying we don't need a cost-benefit analysis? Good accounting practices demand a cost-benefit analysis. Anyone making a decision of this magnitude requires quantitative data, a cost-benefit analysis. You know, Councillor Mays went on in the article to say the city, um, he sees it more like a fee, and he's certainly in favor of starting up a fee and having a conversation with developers. Well, I would say this. Today, any development is required to give the city of Winnipeg 10%. It's called land development fee. Right, and that money goes into a land development reserve account. 10% of the value of the, uh, of the development. We're talking millions and millions of dollars. Now, don't say, oh, you're pro-developers. Do you think the developers are paying or eating that cost? No, they're passing that cost on to you. So if you had uh, some space and you wanted to build a development in here, this is what it's going to cost you. Let's say the project, when you're all done, is going to be you know, $20 million. Well, you're going to have to give a few million dollars to the city of Winnipeg just for land development fees. And you're probably going to have to put in a park. 
you're going to have to use some of your land for water, uh, like for uh, uh, rainwater and such, right? Those ponds that you see around the city. You'll have to build your own roads with curbs to the standard we want, and you'll have to build sidewalks and bike paths. Okay. On top of that, you'll have to bring in all the water and sewer lines uh, to build your development. Fees after fee after fee after fee or cost after cost after cost after cost not being bared by the developer. No one would bear that cost. Even if it was you, you would pass that cost on to the house, to the buyer of the home. So our homes artificially increase in value. Even if you're buying a, a home that's already been on the market several times and you think, well, it's cheaper that way. That price gets artificially inflated because we're selling new homes at such a high price to cover all the city fees that the value of that home artificially goes up. It's a win-lose every time. A win for the government because we just take more money. And a lose for everybody because we cannot have affordable housing until we clean up this house. We have to clean up our house and determine where all the money is going and where it's all hiding. We need a zero-based budget review. We need to stop paying $3 for something that you and I can go buy or have done tomorrow for $1. And we need data quantified data, third-party data, not this is what they tell us. If you have any questions, call me, 204-986-5232, or email kevin at kevinkline.ca.